Long throw in. Berksa working with Kiprich. Field in excellent shape here in Irapuato, considering the amount of rain they had last night. Torrential downpour. Ian Bridge securely back to Lettieri, who throws it out to Bruce Wilson. Wilson, who has announced his retirement plans, he will be quitting the game after World Cup 86 and is looking for a coaching position somewhere in Canada. And what a way to go out, leading your team in the World Cup given Canada tremendous service, Bruce Wilson, and I'm sure you'll find a job as a coach in the new Canadian Soccer League starting next year. We mentioned the fact that Canada and Hungary have met three times in the past, but not since 1975. Bruce Wilson, along with our fellow commentator Sam Lanaduzzi, played 90 minutes in one of those games. Here's Randy Samuel in a foot race with Esther Hazy, and Randy Samuel winning that at the last minute is knocking the ball across the line as we look at our Canadian ambassador, His Excellency uh, Raymond Chrétien, and the Honorable Otto Jelinek, the Federal Minister of Sport, in the press box, or the VIP section, which is right behind the press box here in Irapuato. Corner kick taken, but no damage done. Varga. Working against Paul James. The cross into the box. Headed away by Randy Samuel. Right to the feet of David Norman. Norman plays it for Igor Bradley. Bradley gets by one man. Plays it for Jerry Gray. But Gray unable to do anything with it. And Bradley has words with Jerry Gray. Esther Hazy. Dottie or Berksa, which is the attack to the far side, and Noji just watches that sail over his head. Really switched the attack to the far side, switched it to halfway up the terrace. This stadium seats about 31,000, although I'd say about uh, half full for this Canada-Hungary game. Dino Lettieri. And if we get a chance, uh, we'll talk about the back of the net. Kino's net. Ozzy is there. Kino's stuffed parrot. His good luck piece certainly didn't help him on the first goal. But Ozzy is there. Fans of the Vancouver Whitecaps will know what I'm talking about. Bridge keeps the pressure on with a header. Cleared by Cardo. Now Bob Lenaduzzi. Lenaduzzi, Valentine. To Paul James, James with a low cross. David Norman to Bradley, and Bradley's unable to turn and get the shot away. And the Hungarians clear it. It's Harry. Long ball down the middle, taken by Bridge. Randy Reagan. Valentine, good ball. Valentine gets around his man, but knocks the ball too far ahead, and they go back to the keeper's end drive. And what a difference a day makes. This Hungarian side were caught flat at the back so often against the Soviets. Today they're covering so well that every chance Canada's had so far has been snuffed out before it gets really in the dangerous zone. Free kick to Canada. Ian Bridge will take it. Many people felt that the Hungarians gave up in the Soviet game after they were down 2-0. Bradley can't get to it with a head. David Norman with a long shot from well out. Norman appealing for a foul, but referee Al Sharif says no. While we wait for the ball to come back and look at the excited fans, let me reminisce a bit about 32 years ago. Think back to this Hungarian side. Grosic, Kuzanski, Lanos, Bosic, Laurent, Zakarias, Zibor, Kosic, Hidigudi, Puskas, and Tot. What a team. And I'm often asked if the present Hungarian side could give the 1950s team a run for the money. And I always answer, of course they could, because the 1950s team by now is over 60 years old. 
very tough, very tough to try and compare different generations of soccer players, but that 50s team was brilliant. Here's one of the younger members, Tatari, playing for number 19, Bogner, on the right flank. Bogner with the cross, headed away by Leonard Uzi. Bogner gets it back. Delay. Delay. Ian Bridges there for Canada, and then Wilson back to Dino Lettieri, but Vitari was awfully close if Lettieri made a mistake. Bob Lenaduzzi for Jerry Gray. Randy Reagan with some space. David Norman was wide open on the left flank, but obviously Reagan didn't see him. And that's why it's so easy to play the game from up here. Everything is spread out. You can see everybody on the field, every space. But down there, it's very crowded, marking very tight. That number 17 who made a quick appearance on the uh, off the Canadian bench was Les Wilson, the team administrator, who has really done a tremendous job in preparing this Canadian team. Hungary 1, Canada nothing. CBC coverage of World Cup 86 continues in just a moment. Every day in a special way, and we like Budweiser. That great Bud taste keeps coming through. This Bud for you. For all you do, this Bud for you. Canada is proud to support Canada's national team and youth soccer across Canada. I'll stand with the best, the best in the world. Petro Canada, our energy is Canada. Welcome back to Irapuato, the city of silver and strawberries in Mexico, where Canada is playing the Hungarian. We have played just Almost 27 minutes of the first half here in Irapuato. Hungary leading Canada 1-0 on an early goal. But the Canadians have settled down after that goal and have really taken it to the Hungarians. They certainly have taken it to the Hungarians as we look at the Hungarian skipper, number eight, Antal Nogi. Lying there in apparent agony after a collision with Igor Bradley. And the Canadian team takes advantage of the situation to come over for the best for little bags of plastic water. And while we have the opportunity, we'd like to pass along a happy birthday greeting to the wife of our hard-working host in Mexico City, Diane Cuthbert in Toronto, as we look at how Noji ended up on the turf. So happy birthday from all of us in Mexico City, members of the CBC team, to Diane Cuthbert. Hope you're having a good birthday. Delay. Play blow down by referee Al Sharif of Syria. And a free kick awarded to the Hungarian. Cardo. Indicating that uh, we have a substitution about to take place. And it will be Antal Roth, number three, coming in to replace number 17, Berksa. And that's a surprising substitution because Roth is a defensive center back. Berksa, a midfield player. So it looks very much as if Hungary are going to try and lay back a little and defend this one nothing lead. They started this game at noon Mexican time, which is the hottest part of the day in Mexico. Temperature before game time was in the high 20s Celsius. I imagine we're into the low 30s now. As if the altitude wasn't bad enough, the heat can be really bothersome. This is Big Ian Bridge, number six. Igor Bradley's winning that challenge, gets it to David Norman. David Norman 
Trying to get around his man. Plays it back to Bradley. The cross. And Carl Valentine was there, but he couldn't get ahead on it before Joseph Zendry, the Hungarian goalkeeper, punched it away. Kiprich against Bruce Wilson. Kiprich running for the line. And the linesman indicates a corner kick for the Hungarian. As we look at Tony Waiters, concerned Tony Waiters. Has to be at this point in the game. His team is down one nothing, and Tony knows he needs a positive result out of this game, a tie or a win, if he has any chance of going through the second round. Andy Samuel heads that away to Paul James. Hungarians keep the pressure on. Varga swings it wide. David Norman is there and plays it back to the keeper, Tino Lavieri. One nothing to score in favor of the Hungarians. Bob Lenarduzzi, who now plays for Tacoma in the Major Indoor Soccer League. Plays it for Carl Valentine, who plays in Cleveland. To Jerry Gray, who plays in Chicago. That pretty well tells the story of Canadian soccer. We do not have a professional league, although one is on the horizon for 1987. Most of the good players are in the MISL. And therein lies another long and agonizing story in terms of preparing this Canadian team for World Cup 86. Cardos. For Roth, a substitute. You're allowed two substitutes according to FIFA rules in international play. So the Hungarians have used one of theirs. Eszterházy for Hungary. Randy Samuel coming on in support. And the referee indicates the goal kick for Canada. The Hungarians were hoping that the way Eszterházy went down, they may get a penalty shot out of it. Lanaduzzi looking for Bradley, finds him. Bradley's unable to control it. Cardo for Salai. Salai to number seven, Kiprich. Back to Salai. Noji. Can't get by Wilson. Wilson with a neat little chip forward to Jerry Gray. Gray with the cross. And Valentine gets the cross in. He does to Paul James. Paul James couldn't do anything with it once he had got it. Good build up on the part of the Canadians in moving the ball forward. They do get the corner kick. And a good run by Valentine. His control was not as good as his penetrating run and his cross was just too far for Paul James. But this is a very encouraging attack for Canada. Just over 32 minutes gone in the opening half here in Irapuato. Hungary leading Canada by a score of one to nothing. Jerry Cray with the corner kick. Cray swings it in near post. Headed away by the Hungarian defenders. Titari working against Paul James. And it'll be a throw into Hungary. Varga finds the head of Titari. He flicks it on. Roth for Salai. Salai finds his man, number 19, Bognar. A good move there. This is Kiprich. Kiprich with the cross, but neatly cut out by Bruce Wilson. Paul James. Lanaduzzi. Gray. Gray again. Back to Ian Bridge. Jerry Gray is a little number eight. Midfielder for Canada must be really pleased to be in this game. He was so disappointed to miss the France game. Worked so hard to get over a broken leg he sustained last year. And now into the game replacing Sweeney. It's Hungary 1, Canada nothing. Coverage of the Labatt World Cup TV series continues in a moment. Nearly four hours. That's how long it took us to paint this room with a roller. Then we painted it in less than one hour with the new Wagner Power Roller. A living room that took nearly seven hours. 
The Wagner Power Roller finished in less than three, the Power Roller pumps paint straight from the can to the roller or to any of several optional accessories. Why waste your time painting a pan when you could be painting your walls instead? The Wagner Power Roller, the right tool for painting. Harvey's has a new sensation with our salad story. Add our chicken fingers and your talking glory. Our salad's always fresh, the chicken solid white meat. Any way you dip it, it's a real mouth water and treat. And a beautiful sight, we make it just right. Harvey's makes salad and chicken fingers a beautiful thing. Welcome back to Aeropuerto. I'm Steve Armitage along with Graham Leggett. And we're coming to you live from this beautiful little stadium located in the strawberry capital of Mexico. The local team that plays here are called the Strawberry Men of Irapuato. It's Hungary 1, Canada nothing. 35 and a half minutes gone in the opening half. Outside of an early goal that Canada gave up to the Hungarians, they have really dominated this first half of play. Hungary took that early goal in the first minute through Esterhazy, and since then they've been content to lay back, make sure they don't give up the goal, and have left Kiprich and Bogner as the two front runners. And the Hungarians are doing their best to slow things down, play the game as much as possible, kill off the pressure second. In the opening round, all you want is a positive result, which can be a tie or a win. As we look at David Norman and Jerry Gray taking water from one of those many plastic bags. That's what you see on the field here. This is Carl Valentine. Plays it back to David Norman. David Norman making a run down the left flank. Tries to find Valentine. The ball goes off the foot of Valentine and that'll be a throw in for the Hungarians. In the Soviets game against the Hungarians here in Irapuato, we saw them going to the water time and time again. And the Soviet trainer was asked if there was anything in the bottles besides water, and he said, nope, just ice water. Everybody seemed to think the way the Soviets played against the Hungarians in a 6-0 win, that they had found some magic formula. But the Soviets say no. Bruce Wilson. Tries to find Valentine, cut out by Roth. Ditari. And the linesman flag goes up into getting offside. Now let's go back to our control center in Mexico City and Chris Cuthbert for an update. Well, Steve, in Guadalajara, Brazil appeared to open the scoring. The Algerian goalkeeper makes the save. Ball goes loose to Socrates, but they rule a foul against Brazil. It's still scoreless, Brazil and Algeria. We're back to the live action in Irapuato, and this is number seven, Keeperich. He crosses it to Dekari. Dekari's shot deflected by Randy Samuel. The Hungarians keep the pressure on. Estrahazi. Back to the top of the box, and David Norman is there for Canada. Shaky moment for the Canadians. And that's the danger of having Bruce Wilson go forward on an overlap. He was not able to get back. Keeperich was able to go right through, fortunately for Canada. Once again, the long legs of Randy Samuel came to the rescue. I'll never forget that save that Randy Samuel made, almost knocking the ball off the line in St. John's, Newfoundland in that final qualifying game at 2-1 victory for Canada over Honduras. A big man, Randy Samuel, he's deceptively quick. Of Lenarduzzi, Carl Valentine, Valentine in the 18-yard box of the Hungarians, Jerry Gray, Gray taking it down towards the line and unable to get the cross in, took it one step too far to Jerry Gray. And the little midfielder you see on your screen, a little unlucky there. He took his head up to have a look where the Canadian forwards were and just tapped it over the byline. Goal kick coming to Kiprich. Kiprich trying to get by Wilson. <laughs> and certainly made the most of it to try and impress referee Al-Sharif from Syria. 
not a hard tackle at all. The timing is off by Bruce Wilkes, but certainly not a dangerous tackle. And referee Al Sharif is saying, get Keeperich over to the sidelines. You can't come onto the field. As the plastic bottles continue to rain on from the bench to the players. Very important at altitude to take on as much water as you can to keep from getting dehydration. Bruce Wilson will undoubtedly go back to the keeper, Tino Lettieri. And why Tino is wearing those black sweatpants at this heat, <laughs> I'll never know. But, of course, Tino has just come off the indoor season with Minnesota. They lost in the championship series to San Diego. He's very used to wearing those. That's the only reason I can think of. It's not that uh, Tino doesn't have good-looking legs. Or maybe Tino watched the big Cameroon goalkeeper in Spain who played throughout the tournament in blistering heat with long pants on and gloves. Now it's Bruce Wilson who has gone down in some considerable pain, clutching his right leg directly in front of it. And again, the referee is indicating he wants the Canadian training staff off the field. There you see Wilson. And they are making a substitution. Wilson, the Canadian captain, is out. Jerry, or Mike Sweeney, is on. So Sweeney is in. Sweeney, the native of Duncan, B.C. And most Canadians have seen Sweeney play in midfield, but he can only play at fullback. Signed for Edmonton Drillers as a fullback when he was 17. So he's not accustomed to that position at all. And he was signed by my partner, Graham Leggett, who knows the skills and abilities of Mike Sweeney very, very well. He has the heart of a tiger. It's been our favorite nickname for Sweeney over the years, the tiger. And I'm sure you'll see him challenge like a tiger against the Hungarian. Hungary won, Canada nothing. We have played just over 41 minutes of the opening half here in Irapuato. Bognar tries to find Esther Hazy, steered by Randy Samuel down the right flank, hoping that Carl Valentine could get to it, but he couldn't. Jerry Gray. James. Banaduzzi. Brabley chests it down. Valentine unable to get to it. Gray keeps the pressure on, gets the ball to Valentine. Valentine works his way into the 18-yard box, chips it forward, hoping to find either Randy Reagan or David Norman, but unable to do so. Bradley for Canada. Bradley losing it, and it goes into touch because it will be a throw into Team Canada. Well, Doozy wants to take it very quickly. He elects to go back to Ian Bridge. Leonard Doozy, James. Good challenge there by Varga. Gattari for Hungary. Esterhazy. Gattari. Garaba. Noji. Landuzzi blocking that. Gets it to Valentine. Valentine having his sweater pulled from behind, and that's what Bob Landuzzi is pointing at. And referee Shabby from Syria blowing it down and awarding a free kick to Canada. Just over 43 minutes gone now in the opening half. Hungary won, Canada no score. Jerry Gray and Bob Lanaduzzi over the ball. Lanaduzzi for Valentine at the top of the 18-yard box. Back to Gray. Gray with a blistering drive and it's wide. Good ball laid back by Carol Valentine. Jerry Gray ran onto it very well, but just sliced the shot. But this is very encouraging for Canada, and I can't understand Hungary laying back to try and defend a 1-0 lead. We've seen it disappear so often in this minute. Kiprich trying to keep that ball in play, but the linesman indicated it had crossed the line, so it'll be a throw into Canada. Probably. Marks it back to David Norman. Norman about 15 yards in front of Mike Sweeney, and the referee says, no, you got to bring it back. 
Mike Sweeney throw into Carl Valentine. Valentine losing it. Ditari coming away with it for Hungary. Ditari. Challenged by Norman. Garaba. Noji. Bogner. Randy Samuel on a bit of a run. Gets it to Valentine. Valentine can take people on. He has the speed. He gets the shot away. But it's an easy one for Joseph Zendry. Well, give marks to Noji there. He kept pushing Valentine further and further across the edge of the box till the angle virtually disappeared. Bob Lenaduzzi on the far side. Tries to get the cross in. Goes off the Hungarian player. And safely back to the keeper. We are now into the extra seconds of this opening half. Those added on by referee Sharif for stoppages in play and injury time. Only the referee's time is official. He is checking his watch again. And there goes the whistle to indicate the end of the first half. It is Hungary 1, Canada nothing as the two teams head for the dressing room. CBC's coverage of World Cup 86 continues in just a moment. Terreno volumétrique et ses raisons. 